Hello and welcome to Container Bytes. My name is Mofi. I'm a developer advocate at Google, focusing on GKE and running AML workload on Kubernetes. I have a very special guest with me today. Victor, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, Mofi. Yeah, I'm Victor Salve. I'm a product manager. I focus on infrastructure auto scaling here at GKE. And yeah, I'm here to talk about a new feature that has just gone GA. So this new feature, tell me more about it. Yeah, it's called Custom Compute Class. And this is a new declarative node API that we've released. It's uh, a CRD-based API, so you're able to manage it entirely in cluster. And it lets you configure basically auto-scaling and node attributes for your clusters. And you can do this at a class level. So you can set up a high-level class that is consumed by, let's say, multiple workloads. And those workloads might have similar needs, similar compute needs, similar storage needs, and so forth. And these attributes can be set up to also provide for a number of interesting capabilities like fallback compute priorities. Say if you run into obtainability challenges, if you're going for spot and there's no spot at the moment, or you're going for a resource that's difficult to obtain, like certain accelerators, for example. Now, this will allow you to basically define alternative fallback priorities during an auto scale event. And when you basically hit an obtainability challenge, it will fall back. Would it also allow me to, in the future, if my, the original choice was available, would I be able to then do something automatically to get back to the spot or my community? Yeah, that's right. So one of the really magical features of this capability is this notion of auto reconciliation forward or auto migration. And it will do exactly what you described. So if your top priority becomes available at a later time, we basically pull for that periodically. As it becomes available, we will start migrating your workloads. Again, if you configured, if, if you basically opted into this feature, we will migrate your workloads to that top priority. So this capability works actually in three different modes. The first mode is if you have defined, statically defined node pools. These would be like your pre-existing node pools, and you want to basically use them with respect to your compute classes, you have to set up taints and labels and so forth in order to um, opt them into the compute class. The other way to do it is with a machine family attribute. So you can describe your compute needs at a very high level. Say, I want an N2 with a certain number of minimum cores, certain storage requirements and so forth. And then it, describe your compute in that kind of fashion. And the last way, is by defining actual machine instance types. So you could say, hey, I want N2 standard 16 machines as my number one priority, N2 standard eight machines as my second priority, and so forth. So these three options can be used in combination. You can also use node auto-provisioning if you like, and this will allow you to basically not have to define your nodes in a upfront manner, but basically have GKE automatically provision new node pools as need. Let's take a look. I have a little demo that I brought and I'd love to walk everyone through it. This is called custom compute classes. And again, the idea is we'll be able to prioritize these compute uh, resources. We'll define fallback priorities to the lower priorities and we'll be able to auto reconcile forward. As I mentioned, this is a CRD. It's available on GK version 1.30.3. I highly recommend just like keeping a track of what's happening in the CRD because it's going to be the most up-to-date spec. Now here's an actual instantiation where I've got two priorities created. You can see at this point, I only have my default pool defined. So none of the, the N2 or N2D, which are my two priorities have been uh, kicked off yet. So we're gonna go ahead and actually deploy the class that we just looked at, which is the prefer N2 class. So we've created that now. And now we're gonna create, of course, a deployment or a workload with 10 replicas. And it's actually calling that class. And you can see that's done very easily with a node selector. You can also set up a namespace default, but in this case, we're using an explicit node selector within the workload. So we kicked off the workload and we're gonna watch it spin up. So we have the 10 replicas. You can see the various pods that are pending at this point. We'll speed up time a little bit, but you can see that we've already got a node pool that matches our top priority. So minimum of four cores. So it's a N2 standard four node pool machine. And now it's going to start creating nodes. And you can see that happens in that second block. We've landed everything already on our N2 
standard four nodes. Now let's try to simulate a situation where we've used up all N2 quota. And I've got a little script here that actually just chews up all the quota. So it's basically going to create a bunch of instances in GCE that eats up the quota. Okay, so we've done that and we're out of N2. So what's going to happen when we scale up to 25 replicas? According to our priorities, we know that the second priority in our class is N2D. So what we anticipate seeing is N2D nodes being created. You can see right away we get the N2D standard for node pool. And you'll see in a moment, the matching nodes will also be provisioned. And that's because again, the N2 is no longer available in this project. We've chewed up all the quota, so we fall back, right? So we're back in the second priority. And again, these are arbitrary. I've set these up just for demonstration purposes. Your use cases might be vastly different. Maybe you can imagine ways where you can use this sort of thing where your most cost-effective or your most performant classes are not available in a given moment. So now let's see some magic, right? So we want to see what happens once we release that N2 quota. If we release it, that now means we have availability in N2. And we should see auto reconciliation because we've turned on the auto migration feature. We should see it actually reconcile forward to the N2. So again, I'm going to just do the opposite of what I just did. I'm going to delete those instances, which will free up my N2 capacity. So let's see that happen. Okay, so now we've gotten rid of all those N2 instances. And you can see that right now we only have two N2 standard four nodes. And you can see we still have a bunch of N2D nodes active. GKE is now starting to look at, hey, do I have N2 available? Because it's constantly looking at what's available. And at this point, it's going to start realizing that, yes, I do. So you can see it's created a new N2 node. In this case, it happened to choose an N2 high CPU four a node pool, and it's going to create a bunch of N2 high CPU four nodes. And this all happened without us touching anything, right? So it just like magically started saying, hey, my highest priority is available now. I'm going to start migrating all the pods to these N2 nodes. And voila, we get, we get onto our highest priority. So in about a minute or so, we've migrated over. Now, again, this is optional. So I don't want you to think that we're going to like arbitrarily mess with your workloads, but it will respect things like PDBs. It will respect things like safe to evict annotations and so forth. So that we're only doing this if you opt into it and if it's desirable and if it's timely uh, for you. So you can see that now all the N2D nodes are gone. Eventually you'll see that the N2D node pool will also go away. There it went. And that's it. So. That's the demo. So hopefully you can envision some use cases here. Again, this was a simplistic kind of N2 callback to N2D. You can have multiple, right? You could have 10 priorities if you want, right? But there's a lot of configurability, a lot of options here. All right, so just to recap what we saw here, this was custom compute classes, which allows you to set up and execute fallback priorities for compute for purposes of attainability and to allow you to maximize on things that are important to you, like price performance, and so forth. And we feel like this is going to be a very powerful tool for GKE customers that are keen on really optimizing and, and using auto scaling in the future. This feature is already GA. We'll link to the documentation and a blog post for this feature in the description below.